Recently, Hainan was affected by Typhoon Trami, with continuous heavy rain and rainstorms, causing flooding in many rivers, especially in Qinghai City. Most urban areas were flooded, villages were submerged, water and electricity were cut off, and the roads were full of vehicles soaked in water. According to mainland media reports, three people have died, and the number of casualties has yet to be confirmed. According to reports from many mainland media, due to the residual circulation and cold air after the weakening of Trami from the night of the 28th to the 30th, Hainan Island and other places continued to experience heavy rain or heavy rainstorms. Traffic in Qionghai was suspended, and many villages were flooded. Villagers climbed onto the roofs to avoid and wait for rescue. Due to the heavy rains for several days, the water level continued to rise. Hainan Daily reported that as of 2 o'clock on October 30th, the water levels of three large and eight medium-sized reservoirs in Hainan province exceeded the flood limit. Among the 83 large and medium-sized reservoirs in Hainan province, the water levels of 22 medium-sized reservoirs exceeded the normal water level. The New Luling Reservoir and Hongling Reservoir in the upper reaches of the Wangquan River released floodwaters, causing the water level of the Wangquan River to exceed the warning line by two meters. Low-lying areas were flooded, multiple sections of roads were inundated, and vehicles were soaked in water, with some people washed away by the flood. On the 29th, Jiyang District of Chonghai City issued a situation report stating that at 12.20 on the 28th, a student accidentally fell into the municipal drainage pipe when walking to the bus station at the entrance of San Luo Village in Nanding Village. At 11.08 on October 29th, rescuers found the missing student in the river under the bridge of Hai Luo Village Group 1, and there were no vital signs. According to a notice issued by the Dongtai Ju Potong Group of Huishan Town, Qionghai City, on the 28th, a mother and son were riding a motorcycle on their way home. Because of the heavy rain, when passing the bridge near the glue station of Team 19, the mother and son fell under the bridge and were washed away by the flood and died. Aerial video shows that the Jiaji Dam of Wangquan River in Qionghai City has been submerged by floods. The river water level is almost the same as the road next to it. Many houses are submerged in water. Due to flood discharge, Several towns in Qionghai have flooded the roofs of self-built houses in rural areas, large areas of farmland, and houses are submerged in water. Local residents in Qionghai, Hainan, sent a message saying, The water in my home has continued to rise from yesterday to now, from the second floor to the third floor. My children and parents are in the town of Shibi, with no water, no electricity, and no signal. Qionghai City issued an emergency announcement late at night, stating that from 2300 hours on October 29th, all traffic in the city will be stopped except for emergency rescue and ambulance vehicles. Local netizens called for action, saying, Most areas of Qionghai have been flooded, and water, electricity, and signal are almost lost. Now I can't contact my family and don't know the current situation. But what's chilling is that almost no one cares, except the locals. At present, the reservoirs are still releasing water, and more than one reservoir. Some low-lying areas in Qionghai, Hainan, have fallen. The affected people even include the elderly, children, and pregnant women. There are very few authoritative reports, and almost no one in the inland knows about it. The Hainan flood needs attention. I hope more people can see it. At 9.40 on October 30th, the Hainan authorities continued to issue a second-level rainstorm warning, saying that under the combined influence of the remnant vortex of Tamai and cold air, most parts of the province experienced heavy rainfall of more than 100 millimeters in the past 24 hours, including Cheongjong, Tunchang, Cheonghai, and Wanning. Most towns and villages received more than 250 millimeters of rainfall, it is expected that in the next 24 hours, some towns in Wanning, Lingshui, Chongjong, Baoting, and Chonghai will still experience heavy rainfall of 100 to 200 millimeters, and some towns in Tunchang, Dingan, Wuzhishan, and Baisha will still experience 50 millimeters of rainfall.
In the early morning of October 30th, the Ministry of Water Resources of the Communist Party of China launched a flood defense level 4 emergency response to Hainan province, saying that due to the influence of Typhoon Trami, Hainan province has experienced continuous heavy rainfall since October 28th, and 16 rivers including Nandu River, Wangquan River, Lingshui River, Wenjiao River, Juku River, etc., have experienced floods above the warning level. Six rivers, including the Huishan section of the upper mainstream of Wangquan River and the Xinwu River, a tributary of Nandu River, have experienced floods above the protection level. Reservoirs such as Niululing and Hongling in the upper reaches of Wangquan River continue to operate at high water levels. There is no specific report on the outbreak of large-scale floods in the local area. Affected by Typhoon Kani, Shanghai may experience extreme rainfall. Affected by Typhoon Kani, Shanghai will experience heavy rain from the evening of October 31st to November 1st. At the same time, the maximum land gusts on November 1st will be 8 to 9, and the Yangshan port area will have gusts of 10 to 11. The Shanghai Meteorological Department reminds the public to minimize going out and to stock up on water and food during the typhoon. The news was on Baidu's hot search on October 31st. According to reports from multiple mainland media on October 30th, under the combined influence of the outer circulation of this year's 21st typhoon, Kani, and cold air, Shanghai will experience showers starting from the afternoon of October 31st, and the rain will intensify in the evening. Heavy precipitation will continue until the early morning of the 2nd. The concentrated precipitation period will occur from midnight on the 31st to the daytime of November 1st. The total rainfall will be 120 to 180 millimeters, and it may reach 220 to 280 millimeters in the southeast. The maximum hourly rainfall intensity is expected to be 40 to 70 millimeters. The precipitation is extreme and may become the largest precipitation event in November since 1981. At the same time, starting from the night of the 31st, the wind force in Shanghai will gradually increase. On November 1st, the maximum land gusts will be 8 to 9. Gusts will be 9 to 10 in high-rise buildings and along the river and coastal areas, and gusts will be 10 to 11 in the Yangshan port area. The wind force will gradually weaken in the afternoon of the 2nd. The Shanghai Meteorological Department reminds the public, 1. Before the typhoon hits, you can store drinking water and food in moderation and try to reduce going out during the typhoon. 2. Beware of strong winds, properly put away outdoor items, and prevent falling objects from high altitudes. Do not seek shelter from wind and rain near temporary buildings, and park your vehicle away from large trees, etc. 3. This event is extreme, and heavy rainfall may cause local water logging. If you are outdoors, be careful not to wade easily, be cautious of the impact of storm surges, and take precautions in low-lying areas. 4. This event will have a significant impact on traffic, so pay attention to timely updates on travel information and forecast and warning information. The Meteorological Department predicts that due to the influence of rainfall and cold air, the temperature will drop on Friday, November 1st, and Saturday, November 2nd, with the highest temperature only 20 degrees Celsius. The weather in Shanghai will return to calm on Sunday, November 3rd. There will be another cold air event next week, and Shanghai will be mainly cloudy, with temperatures dropping further. Many netizens expressed their concern about this. Netizen. If you want it to be good, suggested, at least you can buy some biscuits, an alcohol stove, a small amount of instant noodles, as well as dried noodles, rice, and various seasonings. Potatoes, taro, and sweet potatoes can be stored for a few days. Another netizen lamented, the magic of the former magic city has disappeared. The recent typhoons have not been bypassing it. One of them swept through and then turned around and swept back. Another netizen also said, Shanghai's weather this year is terrible. There will be a strong typhoon in November. Unseen in decades, seawater backflows into many parts of China, flooding houses, waist-deep water. 
On October 21st, seawater backflow suddenly occurred in Hebei, Liaoning, Tianjin, and other places. Some coastal villages and ports were surrounded by seawater, and low-lying houses were flooded, with water reaching waist depth. Chinese Communist Party experts said that this was related to astronomical tides. The phenomenon triggered heated discussions among netizens, and some residents said that this high tide had not been seen for decades. Why didn't those experts warn us? Why did it happen now? Starting from the early morning of Monday, October 21st, seawater backflow rarely occurred in many places such as Tianjin, Tangshan, Liaoning, and Jiangsu. People woke up to the flood and fled their homes in surprise, suffering heavy losses. China's Bohai Sea, Yellow Sea, and East China Sea rarely experienced tidal backflow. The seawater overflowed the coastline, broke the embankment, and engulfed farmland. Towns and villages seemed to be in the sea, with a vast ocean stretching for thousands of miles. The tide levels in Huludao, Liaoning, Weifang, Yantai, Weihai, Shandong, Xiamen, Fujian, and other places also continued to exceed the warning line. The situation in Erjigo, Dawa District, Panjin City, is the most serious. Some houses are left with only roofs visible. Due to the sudden flood, people could only scream and flee for their lives, with some climbing onto roofs for shelter. The current casualties are unknown. A video captures a voice saying, it's too miserable, unimaginable. The ground where we usually live is now a vast ocean, all this water. Residents in many places in Panjin and Yinku, Liaoning, said they have not seen such a large tide in 30 years. The video shows the tide rushing into villages and residents' houses, with vehicles on the streets breaking down. Indoor appliances and furniture were soaked in water. A video captures a voice saying, where are the people? The whole house is full of water. I almost climbed onto the Kang, about 10 centimeters away. Water affairs personnel in Rudong County, Jiangsu Province, revealed that the Dongling Gate was destroyed, flooding the greenhouse and causing heavy losses in aquaculture and agriculture. A video captures a voice saying, we have exceeded the highest tide level in history. The tide destroyed the dam outside the gate and came straight in, flooding the shrimp sheds. In some ports in Tangshan, Hebei, and Tianjin, the tide rushed into warehouses and houses, flooding containers. Officials confirmed that the seawater backflow is abnormal, with no clear records found at home or abroad. The CCP's Global Times reported on October 22nd that the CCP's Ministry of Natural Resources stated that from the evening of October 20th to the afternoon of October 21st, Tide stations in the central and northern parts of the Bohai Sea and the Yellow Sea saw water levels rise by 80 to 160 centimeters without the influence of any obvious weather systems. The high tide level reached the local red alert level along the coast of Liaoning Province, the orange alert level in Qinhuangdao City, Tangshan City, Hebei Province, and Yantai City, Shandong Province, and the yellow alert level in Tianjin City, Kangzhou City. Hebei Province, Weifang City, and Weihai City, Shandong Province. Additionally, on the afternoon of the 19th, the high tide level along the coast of Nantong, Jiangsu Province, reached the local red alert level. No abnormal water increases were found in coastal areas south of the Yangtze River estuary. Officials pointed out that similar abnormal conditions were not found in other parts of China, or even in other seas around the world during the same period. It was said that this abnormal water increase was strong and lasted for a long time. The abnormal water rise of about one meter lasted for more than 20 hours along the Bohai Sea coast. Around the early morning of the 21st, many tide stations in Liaoning province recorded unprecedented high tide levels and seawater backflow occurred in Liaoning, Hebei, Tianjin, and other places. So far, no similar cases with clear records have been found at home or abroad. Villagers in Ergiego, Dawa District, Panjin City, said there were signs of rising water on the evening of the 20th, but the water was not large. The water rose particularly sharply at around 5 a.m. on the 21st. A neighbor was still in the toilet at the time, but the water came up all of a sudden and almost drowned him. 
Some Panjin residents said, this tide rose too much and it has not been seen for decades. Other residents said, there may be high tides at this time every year, but this year's is indeed a rare high tide.